You know, today we see the influence of Japanese culture everywhere. Uh, no Nashvilleian gives a second thought to uh, Japanese restaurants, Japanese cars, or Japanese consumer electronics. We have a cherry blossom festival every year on, uh, near the courthouse, and there's a Japanese cultural center in Murfreesboro. And today our ties to their culture and their people are, are warm and strong and very deep. But there was a time when all of that would have been impossible. There was a time when the Japanese garden was removed from Centennial Park. And then there was that time. At 7.48 a.m. on Sunday morning, December 7, 1941, aircraft attacked the U.S. Naval Base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. By that Sunday afternoon, Nashville and really anyone with a news with a radio had heard about the attack. From the beginning, it was a very personal thing for Tennessee and for Nashvilleans. The USS Tennessee, one of our battleships, was in Pearl Harbor. It was hit with two bombs and badly damaged and nearly sank. The attack continued for two hours with waves of bombers, fighters, and torpedo planes coming in on Battleship Row. Uh, Fort Island was the target, and the fleet at anchor there was either badly damaged or sunk into the waters of Pearl Harbor. There were over 1,400 people, military and civilian, perished that day, and about 1,300 others were wounded. The next day, December 8th, the United States declared war on Japan, and by Thursday, December 11th, uh, we declared war on Nazi Germany. In earlier, in four days' time, Tennesseans found themselves sending again their young men and women off to a, a world war, and this one was truly global. World War II was the greatest human effort in history. Those veterans who fought during those times are fading away. Their stories need to be remembered. Their defeats, their sacrifices, and their victories all need to be remembered by future generations. Eight years ago, the Metro Archives held an exhibit entitled The Boys of East High, centered on the papers of William Henry Oliver, who was the principal of East at that time. And Oliver, a very special person, he took it on himself to write to every boy that left from East High. And he continued that through the war, and it only ended when he got the sad news that someone would not be coming home. And for him, it was very personal, and for Nashville, you know, you see, you see empty seats and they know what's happened. 75 years later, it's been a long time. We look through blurred images, we look at grainy black and white photographs, we listen to old scratchy audio files to try to hear and see and understand what went on. But to the, the veterans of that conflict, it's their story. And to them, you know, we, we can experience it in black and white and in photographs and in sound. But to them, like the old song goes, they see it in color. It's still very, very vivid to them. They, they know and they understand what it was like. And the video we took that day of the remembrance at the archives is on the Nashville YouTube entitled The Boys of East High. So go there and listen to their voices. Listen to, to those who over 70 years ago changed the entire world. They're not gonna be with us much longer. They're passing away at a rate of 500 a day. They're old now, and soon their voices will be still. But 75 years ago, they were the young men and women who changed the entire world. <laughs>